You're listening to Biz Souls, the business podcast with an edge, hosted by me, Rona Lewis, and Jeffrey Hansler. Tune in for perspectives and discoveries about the changing world of business. It's time to connect to the heart, soul, and humor of how business gets done. Hello, hello, everyone, and welcome to Biz Souls. I'm Rona Lewis. And I'm getting ready to be Jeffrey Hansler. And He's still working on it. He's been working on it for a really long time. Well, and we've got the, uh, we have an air show going on, we, so we do. So if you hear any any planes, um, tough. <laughs> That's yeah. just the way it is. So <laughs> we get to the heart and soul of business, and most importantly, the people that make it happen. And today, Robert Schuler is making it happen with yes, us. Yes, yes, Robert is. Um, I guess what we met. Gosh, how many years ago? Six, seven years. Five, six years ago? At least. Yeah, yeah. it was. Uh, um, I, um, as, as many of you know, I do a food blog, although I have been a little remiss in the past year or, or two. And yeah, Robert, she hasn't posted. Yes, uh, I will. Well, I did when, when uh, for the, um, for the uh, spaghettinis, I did. And um, it actually was, was great because it's getting me back into posting my, my food. I still cook a lot. So Shall we tell the people who Robert is? Yes, please. Robert is the director of public relations for, um, is it just Melissa's Produce or Melissa's World Variety Produce? Does not matter? Uh, people know us by Melissa's Produce. Yeah, that's correct. Okay. Uh, he handles all the PR for food consumer and trade press. Robert's given um, the, been given the title produce expert and produce guru. I like produce guru better. Among national consumer and trade publications, radio and television personalities. He has published more than 15,000 articles in consumer and trade press, as well as giving leading industry trend and marketing presentations at food clients, uh, to food events, including, and there was like a bucket of them listed, um, Culinary Institute of America, Better Homes and Gardens magazine, National Products Expo West, which uh, I go to that every year, and uh, a bucket o food and wine festivals across the country. I mean, you're just, you're omnipotent, Robert. <laughs> and um, Robert and I met through, I think it was Kathy Arkell, who's also, she is a, a prolific um, food blogger. And by the way, graphics, she designed our new Biz Souls logo which is in back of us. I'm very proud Fantastic. of her for that. Yeah. And um, so the last event, Robert, that, that you did what was held at uh, Spagatini's in, here in, uh, it, is it in Huntington Beach? Yeah, it's in yeah. Huntington Beach. Yeah. It's on the very edge of Huntington Beach. So yeah, shout out to Spagatini's. My ex-husband played there. There's a lot of, a lot of jazz. And um, they had come out with their latest cookbook. So I was invited to go and I cooked a couple of recipes from it and we blogged about it and stuff. And, um, Robert, you, you sent us a fantastic list of, um, uh, rather, uh, package of the 10, 10 really popular uh, foods, uh, f fruits and vegetables for winter. And I want to uh, talk, or, or fall, I want to talk about that in, in a second. How did you, like, how did you get into the business? How did you, how do you, does one become the PR person for? Well, well we kind of skipped. Did you, did you want to be this one? Oh. Did you want to be in PR when you grew up? Where did you grow up? How did you get here? Uh, I've, I've lived in Southern California my life. I actually live uh, where most of my family lives, in San Pedro, California, along the coast here. We've got great weather. Um, thank you for having me on there. Oh, you're welcome. Um, my, uh, very simple beginnings. I got my degree at Cal State Long Beach 27 years ago. I got my degree in marketing um, because I like talking to people. I'm a people person, but I also like I've always liked cooking, and so I feel like I was destined for the produce industry or the food industry in general. Yeah. I found a little tiny ad in our job tracker uh, right before I graduated for this produce company called Melissa's Produce, located in Los Angeles, that they were looking for an assistant uh, to the marketing director, and I thought that was right up my alley, and I haven't looked back. I have actually uh, been at Melissa's Produce um for almost 27 years wow. so wow. wow yeah i mean it's a it's it's a great company you guys are just so generous did, with did, everything did you cook at home or was that something you picked up after you um you know uh, a little later in life like i started chefing no, in college 
Oh, no, no. I know. I, I'm not a, a trained chef at the Culinary Institute. I just stuff I, that I picked up from my family mm-hmm. and just uh, enjoy. I, you know, I really enjoy breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day. And, uh, you know, I'm married. I have three kids now. Mm-hmm. And I have been the chef for my family that are still here in my house. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, uh, working for a company, Melissa's Produce, I, we, we have over 1500 different produce items. So it's never boring here at the Schuler household there because I love to bring all these different exciting fruits and vegetables home and prepare them and cook them for my family to enjoy. So, yeah, yeah. You, 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 know. you really do have like a huge variety of stuff. And, you know, I, I, I consider myself a foodie and, you know, I, um, uh, I went to the new school of, of cooking in uh, Culver City uh, with with Kathy, act, actually. And um, and there's still there's so much I don't know. You know, you, you sent us uh, 10 foods for 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 fall. So we have three different kinds of potatoes, Dutch yellow, baby red and gemstone. Um, so what what are the differences between those? Well, OK, first of all, um, yes. Those are actually the 10 most popular specialty produce items in the United States. If I didn't know, really? Melissa's uh, Produce is the largest variety supplier of produce in the United States. Uh-huh. Our distribution is into every state, into your local produce department. We also distribute into restaurants, mm-hmm. uh, food service here, mainly in Southern California. But we have a unique distribution in Las Vegas and at sporting venues across the country. We are considered uh, the high-end produce, really hard to find, specialty, ethnic, new to the United States. We, we, we're the company that always introduces new fruits and vegetables to the United States. Now, the items that I sent you are our top 10, not only for the fall season now, but On a year-round basis, these are the most popular. Uh, We do, uh, you're specifically speaking about uh, baby potatoes. It's a category we're really known for. I mean, we do a whole line of Asian, Latin. We're we're, we're the largest variety supplier of organic produce in the United States, tropical. But baby potatoes seems to be our most popular and has been for a long time. Um, Our signature item which you would find in most stores, almost every store across the country, mm-hmm. uh, one of the items is the Dutch yellow potatoes. Yeah. Uh, that product is pretty much in every single store. A lot of people rep- um, think they're baby Yukon gold potatoes. There's no such thing as baby Yukon gold potatoes. They're actually Dutch yellow potatoes. They're grown in Idaho. Mm-hmm. They're yellow on the outside, yellow on the inside. They're very small in size. So there's not a long cooking time, unlike like a russet potato. Right. They're not very starchy. Uh, the flesh is even yellow, like they're buttery tasting. This item so popular for us that we even, one of the cookbooks that I wrote with the Melissa's uh, culinary team mm-hmm. is the DYP uh, cookbook, which means Dutch Yellow Potato Cookbook. And basically, it's a book on 150 recipes wow. on what you can create with these Dutch yellow potatoes because they're so special. And you can't believe we have a lot of desserts that you can create with the Dutch yellow potatoes because they're so sweet. Interesting. Uh, Have you put that book online yet? Is it digital as well as hard? Oh, you can can find it anywhere on Amazon, um, at our website, melissas.com. It's out there. It's also distributed in produce departments across the country there. Every time we do a really big promotion, especially during this time, because like Thanksgiving coming up in November is like the Super Bowl for food people and for companies like us, because people tend to cook a little bit more at home and do special things for their family and friends to come over and celebrate the big meal Thanksgiving here. And so, but of course, there's so many other holidays going on. Um, this past month, Labor Day, they're so popular on the barbecue, Rosh Hashanah, Jewish mm-hmm. holiday, um, Christmas, Hanukkah, Hanukkah, because of Lachis, yeah. uh, New Year's, you know, all these baby t- potatoes are very popular. I sent you also uh, some baby skin, uh, ba- uh, red baby potatoes. Yeah. Those are the most popular red skin baby potatoes in the United States there. 
And then gemstone potatoes. If you don't know if you like gold or red or purple baby potatoes, the gemstone potatoes has all the different color varieties in one pack. And I think uh, the, there's been a big trend uh, in produce departments across the country to have a really pretty plate. Right. So, you know, when you add color to your plate, I think you can get your kids to eat more produce right. in that regard. And so the gemstone potatoes is another popular uh, potato item that we carry, and it's been popular for quite some time. Yeah. So, so uh, Robert, you've been with them for 20 years, and obviously you 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 care greatly about the food as, as I'm sure Melissa, that probably built into the culture. How big was the place? Was it, has it always been this uh, big and have they always received food from worldwide? I mean, tell us about the business side of it. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Mel uh, Melissa's world variety produce was founded in 1984. It was started by Joe and Sharon Hernandez, whose families were in the produce arena when they, uh, moved from El Paso, Texas, um, uh, to Southern California, they realized uh, that it's difficult to find the produce that they're used to in El Paso. Um, and, uh, you know, El Paso, Texas is really known for their Southwest flavors, chili peppers, jicamas, items like that, tamales for the holiday. And when they were living, live, they still, uh, the owners, Joe and Sharon Hernandez, still reside in Southern California. And going to their local store, it was hard to find those ingredients. Right. So kind of a light bulb came on, uh, what, just over 40 years ago that they decided, you know what, we, we want chili peppers, we want jicama, tomatillos, and, you know, you know, they were just into cooking as well as I am and uh, decided uh, to start a produce company. And it was... You know, starting off in, is, is difficult because it's, it's such a competitive market in L.A. Because in L.A. you've got uh, where a lot of pro the majority of produce companies reside because in Los Angeles, you've got the produce market, the floral market. You've got Union Station 10 minutes away. You've got the harbor um, 20 minutes away. You've got uh, 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 the airport 10 minutes away. So, you know, L.A. has always been the heart of fresh produce in America. Of course, you know, living here or being in California, we're blessed for our produce because California is one of the most agricultural rich um, states in all the 50 states. Mm -hmm. And so um, it, it all came together and made sense for them. Started off as a small company. I remember them, uh, the owners, Joe and Sharon Hernandez, who are right. husband and wife team, their baby, uh, literally nine months after the company was founded, her name is Melissa. It's their only oh. child. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, four right. years old, yeah. which is the age of our company. Right. And uh, that was the only child. And that's how the brand name Melissa's came about. So right. everybody knows this by Melissa's Produce. But on the back of all of our packages, you'll see the parent company, which is called World Variety right. Produce Got there. So, so, so anyway... Um, their company was so small. Um, I remember them telling me stories that they um, that uh, they didn't have a forklift. They had a warehouse area right under the freeways. You know where all the freeways meet in LA: the ten, the one hundred and one, the five. Mm -hmm. And they used to have to tip the guy next door because they had a forklift. That's how small they wow. were was, when they first right. begun. But years later we're actually melissa's produce is the largest variety supplier of produce in the united states mm -hmm. both conventional and organic so they've amazing. come a long ways in 40 years and, so, and being with the company almost 27 right. years we we have uh had tremendous growth we started i remember starting in a uh 100,000 square foot warehouse which is a pretty good size because the company was growing you know, after the first, uh, uh, you know, 15, 20 years. Right. But today, our facility is 350,000 square feet. Uh, we have 26 trucks. No longer does Joe and Sharon have to deliver in their Cadillac, which right. they did at one time, and, 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 and bribe the guy next door to get a 
forklift. forklift to <laughs> move pallets. So, so you actually have a forklift now. <laughs> uh, uh, we have a few. Uh, a few several. Yeah. Several. yeah, yeah. So things are a little bit different from you know back then, right. but you know. Because of the because the company was founded on Hispanic ingredients that right. were uh, you know known in El Paso, Texas, mm -hmm. fresh chilies, dried chilies, right. tomatillos, jicama, chayote. We the company back then started to be looked upon as oh they carry all the weird stuff right. you know the the stuff that is not known and not accessible in your stores across the country. Sure. Yeah. Well, for you know forty years later. All of our produce is found in all supermarkets. You know, it's, we do business with our, our, our best customers are the top 25 retailers in the country. So we do business with them all. Yeah, yeah I mean, and, I, I, I didn't mm -hmm. even know what a chayote was before. I know I'm from New York. I had no idea what so, it was. So Ro good question. Robert, so you studied marketing. Now, PR is different than marketing. Uh, and so how did you, had you been working PR when you joined them? Had you, um, or, or did you learn, yes. or did you learn OTJ on the job? I, I learned on the job. So I was assistant to, um, one of the family members who is still active, Deborah Cohen. She hired me. She was the marketing director at that time who hired me. And, uh, I was doing all aspects of marketing presentations, uh, sell sheets, signage, stuff like that. But then um, she started to train me to do all publicity calls. And uh, at about um, five, six years later, uh, I was the sole uh, spokesperson for the company. And that's all I do now yeah. is that I spend my time educating um, food writers, even chefs on the radio shows mm. or TV shows like the TV Food Network, um, food uh, authors, bloggers, everybody. That's how I spend my day. I'm pure. I'm a teacher. I yeah. teach people right. about produce. Um, I've learned things over the last uh, 27 years. I've written seven Melissa's produce cookbooks over the seven years. So I've been able to share my knowledge in print, nationally distributed as well. And uh, that's all I do now of it, in, in all aspects of marketing is that I'm the sole um, um, provider of information about exciting fruits and vegetables yeah. that you'll find in your well, local so, supermarket. And, and or Can I go or do you want to go? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I'm just going to say, so Robert, you should, st yeah, you got to get a podcast going, man. Well, job, maybe, uh, maybe you'll work with us <laughs> and we'll get a podcast going. We'll do a food podcast. Because people don't read anymore, unfortunately. I so know. they, uh, they, they want to YouTube you. So I, you know, I, I got involved <laughs> um, because I, I, I used to go to the, uh, to Melissa's produce for um, when you tattled all the uh, cookbooks and, you know, so how did you get into that? You know, all, um, all, the, all the cookbook authors would would come and and we would uh, blog about okay. the uh, cookbooks and the and the food and stuff like that. Well, that sounds well, like I, a so you that sounds yeah. like a PR thing. Yeah. So I so so I asked him a question. Let him answer. Okay. <laughs> well, um, you know, it, it, it um, first of all, I very much am a people person. Yeah. I like talking. Uh, my wife kills me because I do all the talking for our family all the time. But um, really, it was it, when I was doing all aspects of marketing from presentations and sheets and stuff like that, I found myself present, uh, presenting to our sales team. I would sell to them so they can turn around and sell to the retailers that we sell to. But then um, I guess uh, the company realized that, you know, I have a way with people and I like talking and I educate myself. Um, they just came to me one day and said, we're going to start doing cookbooks. So let's do a book on this. And the first book um, that I did with the company about 18 years ago was the Melissa's Great Book of Produce, still in circulation. It talks about the 500 produce items that America should be or can be, or learn about, mm -hmm. you know, these, I talked about bananas, but the thing is, I, I didn't spend my day talking about just the one common banana. I talked about in the book, um, about the other varieties of bananas. There's plantains, which are cooking bananas. There's red bananas. Yes, a red skin banana. 
um, borrow bananas, manzano bananas, baby bananas. And so I talked about in the book how each and every one is different, how they taste and how you would either cook with it or enjoy it out of hand. And as simple things as when you know it's ripe, um, how to store it, you know. Um, and then, of course, we have a culinary team of chefs who then wrote the recipes for the cookbook. And it just started off as that. And every other year they would say, we're going to do another cookbook. And so our second book was because we were so known for our organic produce. We did a book on just organic produce and cooking. We did a book on chili peppers. We did a book on the 50 best plants on the planet. We did a book on hatch chili peppers. Yeah. Hatch, 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 Hatch chili peppers are really popular, you know. They yeah, really every are. year in, in, yeah. in August, September, we, we're the company that brings the ch- this famous hatch chili out of New Mexico and make mm-hmm. it available for everyone. And people yeah. buy it by the case. Yes. You know, when you buy chilies, you usually buy one or two. But hatch chilies is such a small season. And the fact that they can actually be roasted and then frozen. Then fr- See, that's, most that's, chilies, that's what I do with you them. cannot freeze. Mm. So this particular variety, you can and then you pull out the hatch chilies when you're ready to enjoy. So, so. two business questions. Uh, one, so distribution has changed. Uh, I mean, are they growing more? Like hatch chilies are only grown in uh, New Mexico area, you know, that one region. Uh, uh, Las Cruces, I think that's where they're grown. And uh, they're only grown there. Uh, dragon fruit, or do they grow dragon fruit locally or do you have to import that? Are well, you this importing? this is from Vietnam. This so is it, one of, yeah, so dragon the dragon fruit, fruit is coming from just, Vietnam. So at, okay, well, actually, the dragon fruit we've actually multi-sourced it. The oh. ones, uh, I, the, okay, so um, dragon fruit are the is the seventh, seventh most uh, uh, popular specialty produce item in the United States. Okay, yeah. the ones that I sent you mm-hmm. probably from Vietnam right now, mm-hmm. but because of their popularity on a year-round basis. We're able to source them from California. There's a season in the summertime. The season is just ending um, in the next few weeks. We also get them from Florida. So there's two domestic areas that we get them from. Mm -hmm. However, internationally, uh, because of their popularity, they're like a dime a dozen. I mean, they're like as common as bananas in Vietnam. They're very popular in Honduras and Nicaragua. So we actually source dragon fruit. Oh, Oh, and Ecuador. We actually source from six locations around the world to make this available because when the produce item like a dragon fruit is not in season uh, here in the summertime, as it usually is, uh, spring out of Florida, summer here out of California, um, we can go below the equator and find where it's growing to be able to make it available on a year-round basis. And that's really what Melissa does is when you can't find a produce item that is growing locally we'll go lo- we'll go below the equator where the, the the seasons are opposite and bring it from its um origin that is peak of the season there and make it available so we try to make produce huh. available on a year-round basis they're, they're the de- detectives of the food industry they right. just they will find it <laughs> so real quick what's the best thing what's your favorite thing about what you do and what's the worst thing about what you do um, well, my, the favorite thing I like to do is I like to, I like to talk about produce. Sure. I love to eat produce. I like to cook with produce. So that stuff kind of goes hand in hand. So I love educating, um, other people about this mm-hmm. who have audiences, whether it's a podcast, radio show, TV show, um, an author who's writing a book, educate them, send them samples, let them enjoy their interpretation And go from there. It's really just an educational process. What I don't like about produce industry or working for Melissa, that's a tough one there. Uh, I can only, I only work about 40, 50 hours a week. So, um, and it drives my family crazy always talking about produce. So (laughs) I can't say anything really negative about that, but I I do love what I do. I love writing cookbooks. I like educating I like trying, this is, the, this is the most exciting thing. We're a company that brings in this produce, whether we grow it domestically or halfway around the world or go below the equator to find it in the off season. Trying these produce items for the first time 
and sharing that experience with other people to give them a try is great. I mean, some examples of, of some of the fruits that we've introduced into the United States for the first time and the education started at Melissa's mm -hmm. were items like mangosteen. Oh my gosh, so delicious. Oh. Indian mangoes, uh, dragon fruit. And you know, dragon fruit now is the number one tropical fruit, wow. specialty tropical fruit in the United States. Really? The number one fruit still is banana. Yeah. But um but specialty, which is hard to find, but you'll find them in most produce departments across the country. Right. Believe it or not, is the dragon fruit. Wow. Excellent. So my my only experience with a uh, produce distributor is uh, did you see the movie Splash with Tom Hanks and a uh, long yes. time, right? Okay, so they're there, and people are coming in, and they're they're moving stuff out, and the guy goes, "Hey, the, the these are rotten. No, take these for free." I mean, is that what the warehouse looks like in the in the morning? Have you got local people coming in and in and out and arguing? Uh, well, no, that's a that would be more like a produce market. Uh, we're a, a warehouse, so. Um, you know, yes, first of all, the warehouse is ever changing pallets of this and that or whatever. Um, we're not a company that waits for the produce to go bad. Actually, we're aligned with a lot of local companies here in Southern California, like the LA Food Bank. If it gets to a point where it's too ripe to ship to a, uh, a retailer, to a store or food service, we will give the produce to distribute immediately through like the LA Food Bank or Olive Crest That's or nice. other organizations that really tend to lack that they don't get produce Healthy donations. Produce. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Usually That's like great. there's donations of food from companies that have a short code date. Right. Same thing happens with our produce. We are not about throwing away but finding a home Good. locally that can be distributed fast. That's awesome. Especially in Southern California and for it not to be wasteful. So yeah. what you see on TV is not really what necessarily goes on. Maybe that's maybe something closer to the produce market located down the street. But I think that uh, I think that movie kind of Hollywood, right. you know, to make right, it right. look like crazy. But, so, you know, the thing is, is that I walk into the warehouse and you see all these pallets of different produce. I mean, Produce can't sit for a long time. There's a, there's a short window. So right. it's a matter of pallets of produce coming in and pallets going right. out. It's no open air market. Right. It's about go, getting from point A, the farmer, right. to point B through us mm -hmm. in LA, which is a hub of transportation throughout the United States, and getting it onto the table at a restaurant or getting it onto the floor um in a produce right. department into a, a local store right. so robert i have one more question we're running out of time and then rona's gonna gonna close this off uh my question is 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 things are changing people are, are a lot of homesteading going on people are looking at different types of greens and produce so dandelions are getting big um, uh, miner's lettuce is getting big in certain areas. Uh, all kinds of new produce. Edible weeds. Edible weeds, yeah. yeah. So are you guys getting into that? Are you seeing that trend? Are, are you going down that way or not yet? Just as Well, we've never, we've never referred to them as edible weeds. Like, we're like the largest distributor of dandelion greens in the oh, United States whoops. for the Sorry. last, like, 30-some <laughs> years. So the items that you're talking about there, right. we've always carried. We're just trying to Educate. get chefs mm -hmm. and the supermarkets to carry them because there is a market out there. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, m maybe you're grown in an area and you haven't had dandelion greens, but Never if had. you're from Europe, dandelion greens are very common. Right. Right. So, you know, we bring ethnic produce available to us in the united states there so every item that you listed there are items that we're really known for oh, and you know it's, it's just a matter of education because you know uh when you say lettuce or leafy greens there's more to life than just iceberg lettuce oh. and romaine yes there's okay. really Jeff, okay. 40 Jeff, 50 different Jeffrey, varieties that's, of that's leafy what greens. Jeffrey eats. yeah so <laughs> so i'm sorry i i'm a costco that's okay. smart smart uh, <laughs> final guy okay yeah, anyway. yeah Rona, take so, so, um 
do you have any tips for, for anyone who wants to get into the kind of business you are, who, who may be a foodie or, you know, wants to work in, in PR in the food industry? Well, I think your, your best tips are, is, um, you know, Educate yourself on products that are not out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. Maybe you like to go out to eat and try uh, different experiences. But really, my my job was uh, contacting. First of all, at the beginning, it was a matter of contacting food ed editors and writers and all the different publications. You know, like Food and Wine and you know Better Homes and Gardens all these different magazines and newspapers or food editors i mean it's so easy to get in contact with them and that's how you start um rapport you start a relationship by contacting them and then i just happened to become a source for produce in america so um i don't have to make as many calls unless i'm trying to tell them about a product sure. i really spend a lot of my time taking the calls and answering questions that yeah. they have. Okay. So I get a load of questions from writers all over the country, or they want me to be on their radio show or TV, or they're doing a cooking show and they want ideas on what they need to cook with, what's trending, because um, we, um, I do an annual produce trends uh, presentation every year to talk about not what I believe consumers might buy next year my information is based upon as the largest melissa's the largest distributor of produce uh variety produce in america i have all the information on what produce where it's being bought and i have the trend information by actual sales of produce that i don't look into a crystal right. ball and have an agenda right. i go straight from the numbers and that's how you got your top 10 produce items that you uh, right. received. That, I sent you different varieties of baby potatoes, yeah. dragon fruit, chayote squash, red Caribbean papayas, and right. mangoes, you know. Right, mango, ginger root, and all that. So, all And right. ginger, so, yes. yes. How, do so, they, how do they get hold of you? That's exactly what I was going to ask. How can, how can people I'm so easy. Okay. I'm, I'm uh, melissas.com. Okay, so and you're right you there. Email through there. I uh, I'm more than happy. I mean, our 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 social media. We're really big on social media for you are. a food company. Yeah. we're probably the biggest produce company in social media. Our social media is at Melissa's Produce. We happen to have all of our Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. You know, it that is just an just Google Melissa's of, Produce of and you there will you find go. them. All right, <laughs> yes. Very good. Robert, this has been, thank you so much for, for taking time and, you know, because you are on a lot of, of media, I really appreciate you, you coming on to the, to the podcast and, um, uh, hopefully I will enjoy more time with you, you know, when, uh, Melissa's, um, has, has more events that I can come and uh, write about because it's uh, super fun. Well, and we'll have to follow up on the podcast idea and maybe uh, just uh, get, uh, maybe help you take first step on the, the video maybe, stuff. There we go. Anyway, um, Robert, thank you again. And um, Jeffrey, thank you. Thank you, Rona. All right. This has been Biz Souls. I'm Rona Lewis. I'm Jeffrey Hansler. We'll see you next time. Thank you. You've been listening to the Biz Souls podcast with your hosts, Rona Lewis and Jeffrey Hansler. Did you have fun? Subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It's very much appreciated. Talk to you next week.